Hey, welcome to this illustration process mini workshop. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional artist for 20 years. And over the next two and a half to three hours, I'm going to share my thoughts on illustration. And I'm going to share my thoughts on how I think you can improve your composition, how I think you can get more detail and polish in your finished images. And I'm also going to talk about how we can get those higher level professional jobs, both from, again, a process standpoint, heading towards getting the right level of quality, and also just from a general mindset point of view. So I appreciate you checking this out. Let's get started. In this video, which is just going to be a short introduction video, I want to introduce myself a little bit better, talk about who this workshop is for, and outline those key areas that I think a lot of people struggle with that we can use as areas of study going forward. So those main issues are pretty simple, right? The first is, how do I get more detail and polish in my finished images? The second is, how do I improve my composition? The third, which is a little bit more amorphous, but I think often at the core of why we're trying to get good at illustration and what our real sort of, you know, goal and outcome is, is how do I get people to actually like my work and sort of have that awesome response where they're like, wow, that's cool. And lastly, how do I get good enough to use my illustration in a high level professional setting? So those are the main key areas that I'm going to cover again over the next two and a half to three hours in the subsequent videos. What I want to do just quickly before that is cover who this workshop is for, because I think that will give you a little bit better of an idea about where I'm coming from, right? I'm really into drawing from imagination. And again, I always take that for granted, right? That's what I always wanted to draw. Um, you know, I'd always look at video games and, you know, comics and stuff like that. And that's sort of what I wanted to do. But not all illustration is obviously based on that. What I'm talking about here is illustration, sort of more or less for the entertainment industry. Again, you know, like animation, comics, um, video game, concept art, etc., etc., where we're sort of drawing cool, you know, fantasy stuff that often doesn't exist, and we're doing it sort of from our imagination. That's really what I'm about, right? And that's you know where a lot of my information is going to be um, sort of focused. Secondly, I think it's my sort of teaching style and, and this is really going to be based on people who want an intuitive learning environment, right? Less, I'm not going to necessarily give a lot of sort of studies and like, hey, you know, do this exercise or whatever. Um, I think the best way to get better at this is just to do it a lot more. And I feel like the, the goal here is to make that process more enjoyable, more efficient and to work for us better, right? So it's not just a matter of sort of grinding away, sort of trying different stuff, but we can actually focus on that process and commit to it. Um, I think a lot of good things happen when we do that. Um, it's also for people who want to develop their own line and color based styles, right? Again, a lot of my advice will really help you with that because that's again, what I do. And sync linked to that idea of an intuitive learning environment, it's for people who actually want to get better while creating awesome work at the same time. I think there's a lot of sort of ideas and techniques we can use to actually make that happen. And I think that solves a lot of problems right at the same time. And that's something we should strive for. It's also for people who love drawing or want to love drawing, right? Again, everyone has their own relationship to this. But um, again, I love drawing. I always sort of enjoy sitting down to do it. And I feel like it's important to have a positive relationship to drawing because if we like doing it, we're going to do it more. And if we do it more, we get better. And lastly, it's for people who want to tell stories with their art again, because that's sort of what I'm into. And a lot of my advice is geared towards helping us do that, um, helping you do that in your images. So, you know, who is this maybe not for? Again, this will just give you an idea about, you know, where I'm coming from. Um, it's probably going to be, again, a bit of an inverse of, of those other things. And look, you know, if, if you want to sort of uh, take this, right, even if you are interested in these other ideas, then go for it, right? You know what I mean? Um, but this just gives you an idea for, you know, maybe, again, where my proclivities lie, what I'm into, what I'm not into, and where my advice is really going to help you and not help you. So it's really not for people who want to draw directly from life, 
or directly from reference. Again, that's not what I do. I don't have a lot of interest in that. I don't have a lot of experience teaching people that um, most of my sort of drawing is from imagination without reference, right? So um, that's kind of how I just think about the whole thing, right? I've got an idea in my head. I want to sort of draw it out, right? You know, I, I, I'm not sort of so interested in finding references and, you know, or, um, you know, doing sort of still life studies and that sort of stuff. Um, even though I, I feel like that's, that's all really good. It's just not what I'm about, right? Um, it's also really probably not the best for people who want to use a lot of 3D or photo elements in their work. Um, again, you know, I sometimes do that um, in my work. I kind of know how to do that um, from in a professional environment. Mo very, very, very rarely the stuff you kind of see from me um, online has any of that sort of stuff in it. Um, but yeah, my again, my, my approach is really about sort of just creating stuff from imagination. And it's also not for people who want easy clickbait style solutions. You know, those silly YouTube videos where someone's sort of saying, hey, you know, just do this one thing to improve or, you know, sort of stuff that's really um, trying to, you know, make it sound like there's a trick or there's an easy way to do this, right? My opinion is very simple. I think that becoming good at art and, you know, committing yourself to be an artist, whether that is as a hobby or as someone who's aspiring to the very highest professional level, I think it's all the same. We're just committing to continual self-improvement of our ability to draw and create pictures. And it takes time. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of energy. And I think that what we actually have to do is commit to that, um, you know, marshal the correct amount of energy and resources required to overcome that challenge and try and find all the tools we can to make that as enjoyable and as fun as it and as and as exciting as possible, right? I feel like that's where we want to leverage, right? We want to make this as fun and as possible to sit down and spend as much time as we can on this, right? And then make that time as efficient as possible and you know, again as enjoyable as possible, right? Um, and again, if you're sort of still like, oh, but you know, someone had some really good clickbait YouTube title or something, um, look, just look at their work, right? The proof is in the pudding. Uh, if someone had a really good idea that was like better than everyone else's for teaching you drawing, their work better be like twice as good as everyone else, right? Because I know people who are sitting here working at this, you know, had been working at this for, you know, decades, you know, 16 hours a day, just super dedicated, super passionate, right? And everyone says the same thing, right? It's a lot of work. Um, there's no real shortcut. You just have to work on your foundation. Foundation is like the most important thing. Um, and, you know, you just got to practice a lot, right? That's what everyone whose opinion, um, you know, um, I respect sort of says. And as far as I'm concerned, that's as close to the truth as we can get, all right? If someone's got a trick, then their work better back it up, right? Otherwise, it's just kind of clickbait nonsense, right? Um, again, that's sort of obvious, right? You know what I mean? I'm sure you know that. I'm just sort of stating it, right? Because uh, again, you know, um, I think it's important, you know, you're not going to find that in this video, right? Um, but I am going to share with you my ideas for, again, how we can make that process more enjoyable and how we can make it more efficient, right? Because again, I think that efficiency and that enjoyment is something that I do see in a lot of the artists who I admire and look up to. Um, and, you know, I've met and I've talked about how they've sort of learned this stuff, right? They're all super dedicated and they spend hours and hours drawing and they love it, you know? And I feel like that in many ways is the hack, right? Is to get to that place. Um, so anyway, to move on, it's it's also for people who want to develop, a, it's not for people who want to develop a painterly style or start their process without a drawing, right? Um, again, you know, if that's something you want to do and you still are interested in what I've got to say, like, you know, fine, right? But I'm just sort of saying, you know, um, I'm one of these people who's a drawer, right? I start with a drawing. Um, you know, I, I've sort of tried all sorts of different painting processes, right? I've taken hundreds of tutorials and listened to all this kind of stuff. And you know what I mean? I still always just come back to like, that's kind of how my brain works. I start with a drawing. That's kind of how I think about it. Um, and all my advice is really based around that, starting with a drawing and thinking about it as a drawing first um, idea. And lastly, again, it's probably not really for people who want to draw hyper-realistically, again, because that's just not really what I do. Not to say you might not, you know, learn a lot of stuff. Um, but again, you know, if you're really interested in those sort of ideas, you know, you can maybe check this out, but there's probably other people who are going to be better online at, at teaching, you know, um, again, how to, you know, draw draw from life, how to draw directly from reference, um, how to use 3D or photo, photo elements as a major part of your sort of work or process, and, um, you know, how to get sort of really hyper-realistic, right? 
I can draw kind of realistic, but uh, yeah, I'm not one of those people who's, you know, trying to, you know, make it look photoreal or anything. So anyway, you know, that's just a um, quick overview of who this is for, who it's not for. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of where I'm coming from, the things that, uh, again, my advice is going to be best able to serve you with. Okay, so let me do a better job of introducing myself. Hi, my name's Tim, Tim McBurney. And you might have seen my work on the internet, either on Instagram or ArtStation or YouTube, wherever it is, but you might not be 100% sure, you know, exactly who I am or what am I doing here teaching illustration and concept art and drawing comic book stuff online with online courses. So the quick overview is that I'm a 20-year veteran of the entertainment industries. So basically, I've been a professional artist for 20 years. I've never had any other job. This is all I've ever done, and I'm a full-time drawer, and I always have been. Probably for the last 10 years, I've also been, you know, kind of as a hobby, a drawing teacher where um, you know I, I teach at a school, CDW Studios in Adelaide, Australia, that's very closely linked to the Flinders University, which is just you know a university in, in sort of South Australia. And, um, you know, I don't have a university degree, I'm self-taught, but, you know, a big part of what I do is, is help students there with their basic sort of drawing and illustration skills and sort of basic 2D picture making skills, right? They do other stuff there, you know, they learn 3D and VFX and all that kind of stuff, but my, I'm responsible for their sort of uh, 2D drawing. So I've actually been, you know, teaching, um, you know, both uh, online and, uh, you know, in person um, for, for about 10 years, right? And I have a lot of experience doing it. I'm also a published author, so I've written and drawn my own sort of book. I'm a published comic book artist. And again, as I said, the, the, the easiest way I can explain what I do to people is I'm a full-time drawer, right? I draw stuff um, and I, I've sort of pretty much always been a freelance artist working from home, right? That's where I'm sort of coming from. All right, so a little bit about my career. I actually started as a texture artist in the video game industry, working at a local studio called Ratbag Games in Adelaide, Australia. I went freelance because, again, I'd always sort of aspired to be a freelance artist. I feel like, uh, again, I always sort of, you know, would read books of my favorite, um, you know, artists that I'd aspire to be like. And they, they were often sort of illustrators and, um, you know, people who are, you know, doing fantasy book covers and that sort of stuff. And they always work from home, you know, and so that's sort of what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to, you know, be one of those people with a home studio, you know, doing art for various people, right? That's, I don't know why, that's just sort of what I always sort of imagined doing. And so I sort of did that. Um, and, uh, you know, through my travels doing that, I, you know, started working in the French comic book industry. And I spent like, you know, a lot of my career basically drawing comics, um, again, in the French comic book industry. Here's a, um, a book, which was an adaptation of Pinocchio written by David Chevelle based on the traditional adventures of Pinocchio book by Carlo Collodi. So again, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to work in a variety of different styles. And uh, this really allowed me, well, this really allowed me to work in, again, that sort of French comic book style, uh, those big sort of uh, pages um, where again, it was me being able to create the, the penciling and the design and the um, inking, you know, and the lettering and the coloring, do all of it, right? That's what I really sort of enjoy doing. And uh, again, the French comic book industry was a really good way for me to do that. So again, I did that for, for quite a while. Um, and uh, here's the, the book Ara that I wrote and drew, which again, was another sort of really good opportunity. I've always really liked the idea of Again, me as the artist being sort of, you know, able to create the whole thing. I like that from, again, drawing comics. And I've done a few Kickstarters where I've also, you know, been able to create um, for board games, you know, all of the art, right? Working with a friend where he did all the game design and I did all the art. I've done that a few times and I really like it. I think doing that is uh, super um, satisfying as an artist, right? Is uh, again, when I get to create the whole thing um, from start to finish and, uh, you know, again, make a lot of those decisions and again, have that finished product that I was a big part of it at the end. Um, but probably for the last, you know, I'd say, you know, six or seven years, I've been really focusing on concept art for the entertainment industry. So doing concept art for feature animations, um, animation, you know, video games, again, big studios, small studios. Um, my style is sort of quite specific. So it really is based on sort of who needs me for a particular project at a particular time. 
um, but I'm also, you know, just an illustrator, and, and that's what this course is really about. Um, you know, most of these things really at their core are about making pictures, but I also do, you know, classic sort of illustration where someone will just sort of, you know, email me and say, hey, you know, we've got this thing, we need an image like this, you know, for our project, you know, can you do it? Right. Um, you know, and so again, you know, I do all these sort of different things. If you've seen a lot of my work, uh, you know, online on Instagram or ArtStation, the majority of that is actually just personal work. Right. And I've always been into doing that sort of personal work, um, you know, from the earliest days of the Internet, you know, where we're just sort of creating stuff, you know, posting it up, sharing it with, with people. You know, I've always really liked doing that. And that's, you know, the majority of the work you sort of see from me. Right. It's just me in my spare time, you know, creating fun things, you know, just because I have stuff rattling around in my head, in my imagination, and I want to sort of put it down onto, onto the page and, and make it real. So, again, that's a quick overview of, of my career, just to give you an idea for, you know, where I've sort of come from and the things that I've done. Just a quick note on my education. Um, it's pretty simple. I'm basically as self-taught as you can get in this space. Um, when I was, uh, you know, where I was growing up in Adelaide, Australia, there was no good educational opportunities. So I had to teach myself this basically on my own. And it was lucky that the internet was around, um, you know, just very starting out to, to be sort of interesting at that stage. But there was no YouTube, you know, there were no, you know, people just sort of sharing online tutorials. People were sharing advice on art on forums. But, you know, I basically had to figure this out from looking at, you know, magazines and books Again, talking to people, getting feedback online, um, you know, as soon as online courses became available, you know, I was all over that, um, you know, buying sort of DVD courses and those sorts of things and watching people draw and that made a huge difference, right? That's kind of why I'm here. I always liked, you know, looking at tutorials. I still buy tutorials all the time. You know, it's sort of interesting to see how other people work and what their approaches are. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is, you know, I'm sharing this information and I'm kind of really interested in the idea of blending, again, my experience and my knowledge of how to learn stuff by yourself, right? And a lot of that stuff is, again, just like, it's like, just do it, right? But again, there, there's sort of things that I learned to optimize that along the way. And also, again, I've had a lot of experience, you know, having to teach people in a formal sort of college university environment, um, you know, where, you know, I've had to study exactly how, you, you know, sort of teach people how to draw and what the fastest ways are and, you know, how everyone has a different way of learning, right? It can be very challenging when you've got like a hundred people, you know, and you got to teach them all the same sort of stuff, but they all teach, they all learn differently, right? We're all different. So again, I'm one of those people who really enjoys just doing it myself. You know, I really just like going at my own pace um, and sort of learning, learning about what I'm interested in right at that time, right? That's sort of how I sort of learn. So a big part of what, um, you know, again, what I'm doing here is, is again, I always liked online courses. I always liked tutorials. So I like sort of making them. I like that idea of sharing this information and trying to blend, again, the best sort of practices that you would find in a university, you know, sort of high-end college environment um, for, you know, drawing exercises and all these kind of things. Um, not a lot of that has to do with illustration. Illustration is like a, to me is a little bit different. Um, but again, all of that basic drawing sort of knowledge, taking that and combining it with, again, my experience of what it's like to just be by yourself, um, trying to figure this out, uh, on your own. Right. So again, that's just a little bit, um, of a background of sort of, you know, where I sort of came from, what my educational experience is. Okay. Let's take a look at these four main issues. So again, there, there may be more issues than this that some of these might not 100% directly relate to the things you are struggling with right now. But in my experience, these are the key areas that I think we can use to help improve our illustration. And they were all things that I struggled with. And they're things that I feel like um, I often feel are at the core um, of the problems that people are struggling with. So these hopefully will help you to think about how better to improve your illustration. The first is, how do you get more detail and polish in your finished images? Now, this is one of these things, I would always struggle with this, I would always get feedback notes, even when I was working professionally, that were like, oh, that's cool, but you know, oh, we just need another pass, we need another detail pass, and I'd be like, ah, oh, no, not again. Or, you know, very early on, I would sort of post stuff up to the internet, and you know, people would be like, oh, that's cool, you know, can't wait till you finish it. Um, or, you know, sort of like, oh, yeah, that's cool, keep going. 
And I really just didn't know what to do. I'd try and I feel like the best way I can explain this concept and what I want to sort of talk about is how to fix this problem where you're working on an image and you get it to a certain point. Now, you know it needs more, right? We're not silly. This is the thing. It's not like uh, it, it was never for me and I feel like it's probably not for you that you're sitting there saying, oh, I'm just dumb. I don't know that it needs more detail. It's like I always knew it needed more detail and I feel like often you probably know it needs more detail or it needs more something. It's not like it's not having that finish, that professional kind of high level finish. But what happens is every time you do something else to it, you make it worse, right? This was what I was sort of dealing with is, you know, I would sort of, um, you know, be working on something and I'd be like, oh yeah, this is kind of cool. This is looking good. And I'm like, I know it needs more polish, but every time I like try and add polish, like I do what I think you would need to do to make it more detailed, it looked worse. And there was this point where it's kind of like sketchy and a little bit more amorphous where I felt like it would sort of be good. And I just couldn't get it past that point. Um, so again, that's the real question there is how do we solve that problem, right? Um, the second thing is, how do I improve my composition? So this is one of these areas that, uh, again, I feel like we often get sort of feedback or sort of, you know, it, it comes up as an idea that like illustration or picture making involves this idea of quote unquote composition. And, um, you know, we need to improve it, right? So, you know, composition in many ways, I sort of just view as like what makes a picture good. It's like, it's these abstract ideas people are talking about when they're sort of saying like, is the picture good or not? And certainly if you do have that high level of detail, but your composition is not good, then it's not really going to connect with an audience. And um, this is one of these things that I feel like is very tricky to get our head around properly. Um, you know, I feel like this word means different things to different people. I think it means different things depending on what medium you're in, whether in photography or illustration, or again, even if you're working in one style versus another style. So you know, um, again, I'll, I'll share with you again, my basic ideas for how we can improve our composition. Um, and again, spoiler alert, my, my basic thesis is I think the best thing you can do there is just sort of work on your thumbnails and work on your ability to kind of look at other images you really like. And again, as I'm, as I sort of said, I'm more into the intuitive sort of version of doing that as opposed to doing sort of abstract studies and, and, and little sort of experimental things or sort of drawing lines over masterworks or anything like that, right? I really think the best way you can do this is just to work at it, right? To just do lots of compositional thumbnails and really sort of build that muscle of understanding how a picture is made. So the next thing is how do I get people to like my work, right? How do we get that? How do we get that response? I feel like, um, again, this would be something that I was always chasing and I was always sort of after. And I feel like it, it's, it's the same thing most people are after when they're sort of creating images is when we first saw those really cool things that inspired us to become artists, we had that feeling like, oh my God, this is so, this is so awesome, right? And you kind of want that same response, right? Because often, we have a cool idea in our head and we want someone else to be like, oh, I see your cool idea. That is really cool, right? It's very simple, but it's also very amorphous, right? But these are the kind of, com these are the kind of questions I like tackling, right? Um, I don't want to shy away from these things because this is important, right? It's not just kind of like, oh yeah, well, you know, um, you know, you, you'll never be able to do that or that's, you know, don't, don't worry about it. I think that's at the core of what we're trying to do. And, and again, I want to talk to that and try and um, give you some ideas about how we can think about that. And, and again, my, my sort of um, advice based on, again, my experience of, of trying to sort of make that happen and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And also doing the same thing, again, talking to, to, to students I've sort of talked to and what's helped them and what's not helped them get that thing. I also know this is an issue that plagues people who are already professional artists, right? Is often they get jobs and they get stuff, but you know, they're not able to really get that sort of work. They're not able to really get that thing happening where they produce work, you know, at their work and, and other people are being like, wow, that's sort of awesome. You know what I mean? They're not getting that response. Right. And, uh, you know, so it's not like, uh, this is something that, you know, once you become a professional artist, this kind of goes away, right? I feel like it's something we're always sort of struggling with, depending on, again, how we move medium or, or change stuff around, right? What sort of, again, new approach we take? How do we get that response? 
from the viewer. Um, the last thing is how do I get good enough to use my illustration in a high level professional setting? So this is another one of those things that I feel like is a little bit sort of amorphous, but um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things I can sort of uh, share with you based on my experience of this. And again, things I, I feel like, you know, work and don't work. Um, a lot of this, I think, comes down to process and having a, a solid process. Um, but anyway, you can um, check out the, the more detailed answers to all of these things in the following videos. I basically break down, again, um, how I think this problem sort of manifests and, and things that I've sort of found help um, to kind of, you know, get a positive result here. But um, in the next video, what I want to do is actually share a little bit more of my journey as an artist um, to sort of share again, like how I sort of started, what my work looked like when it was starting out, when it was beginning, um, you know, and sort of how that progressed and how these um, issues really um, affected me throughout my journey. Um, and again, how I sort of started to overcome them, right? So check that out in the next video. I basically talk about, you know, my journey as an artist from, you know, starting out very early on, again, to sort of getting to a point where I did feel like I had that sort of competency when I was working in those sort of professional environments, right? So anyway, we'll see you in the next video there.